Hey, what's up, leaders? So today I'm gonna to be taking you to work with me again. I've actually done a couple videos like this and some of you have shared with me that you really enjoy them. And I will say if this is your first video like this and you do enjoy it, if you like it, please hit the like button. And more importantly, consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything new. And I got some really cool things coming, so hit that button. Now I got some work to do today and so I thought I would share my process for planning and scheduling volunteers using planning centers. So let's jump in. Now I've broken my process down into five steps. My first step is utilizing blockout dates. Now you may be thinking, what are blockout dates? This is where your volunteers can go in and say when they are not available and that in turn keeps you from scheduling them. We've all been there, right? It's frustrating as a worship leader to get and see when someone has declined. As worship leaders, we drag and drop people in and we make our, our perfect dream team and then we think it's going to be great and then we get those declines and we just start to scramble trying to fill in positions where we can and it can be a little bit of a nightmare now i have found that utilizing block out dates really keeps my declines to a minimum now i will say this doesn't just happen by itself you have to create the culture where your team is going to utilize this tool you have to communicate with your team the importance of using block out dates both for you and for them um, you have to teach them how to use them and then you need to remind them to use them. This helps both you and them. So for example, I have some volunteers who I know, we both know that they can't serve, let's say every third Sunday because they're serving with their spouse in childcare. Now, you don't wanna take them out of childcare and make them feel that pressure and you also don't wanna send them an invite on accident just so they have to decline. Now, if it was just that one volunteer with just that one exception, that would be easy enough to remember, but I have multiple team members with multiple different schedules and different needs, and so utilizing block out dates helps keep both of us from being frustrated. Now, let me show you how to use them. On my desktop here, I go to my schedule, and right here at the top, it says block out dates. I'm gonna click on it, and it says, let's add some block out dates. Click a date or drag multiple days to get started. And so you would just do this, and you say, I am not available on those dates. You can say why. I am already scheduled for these days, so they're like, there's a bunch of conflicts. Yes, there are. I'm gonna cancel that because I never get to block anything out. Same thing on the mobile app, which I would definitely say, make sure your volunteers are using the mobile app. I'm actually gonna be sending out an email reminding them to use the mobile app because it's way better than clicking the link in the email and it taking you to the desktop or mobile version. Uh, just get the app. Make sure they're using the app. So once you're on the app, if you go all the way to this tab on the bottom at the left, at the bottom at the left, did I just say that? It says schedule at the very top, it says add block out and you can block out any date you want. I'm not gonna do that. Yes, I want a discard and that's all you do. All right, I think you get the point. Use block out dates. Okay, step number two is utilize matrix mode. Now this is something I use all the time and I don't even think about it anymore, but I thought I would mention it because I've had several conversations with worship leaders where I'll mention matrix mode or I'll show them and they're like, ooh, what is that? And I'm like, what? You don't use matrix mode? Like, take the red pill now and come with me on the journey because matrix mode is gonna help you plan multiple weeks in advance with ease. All right, so let me show you. So under this plans tab, I'm gonna click on Sunday worship. That's what we wanna look at. I'm gonna go to February 14th. You'll see why in a second. And then up here it says matrix. I could just click on it, but if you hover, you can see I wanna see four previous plans and four next plans, load matrix. This is why I clicked on February 14th because now I can see this coming week as my first week and then eight plans after that, or nine plans, nine plans. But you can see as many plans as you want. You can go up here to load a plan. Um, Sunday worship, I can load more plans if I want to, sure, why not? I can even load plans from a different service type, which this comes in handy because let's say I wanted to see my upcoming Easter service from last year and compare it to this year's Easter service in case I don't wanna make the same set list again. I wanna compare the two, you can do that through matrix mode. And the reason I like this is because not only can you see multiple weeks in advance, but you can also drag and drop songs, items, and even people when you're scheduling. It's really easy and it's the way to go if you're gonna plan well. Now, these first two steps I mentioned are just tools within Planning Center that I wanna make sure you were using, but step three in the process is now we actually have to schedule volunteers. Now, there are different ways to schedule your teams. And I'm saying teams like you have multiple. Some of you might be thinking, I only have half a team or one team and that's fine. But if you have multiple teams where you're scheduling different people, different weeks, there are different ways you can go about it. You can schedule teams that always play together like team A, B or C or D or E or however fortunate you are to how many people you have. Schedule different teams that always play together or do like I do and schedule people per position. Now what I mean by that is I go through and I schedule like all my drummers first and I keep them on a rotation based on how many people are in that position. So 
So right now I have three drummers and so I just rotate them and they play every three weeks. On the other hand, I think I have four keyboard players. So I schedule them every four weeks. And I only have right now only one electric player other than myself and so he's playing every week. All right, let's get back to the task at hand. Now, I was just on the phone this morning talking about how far in advance I like to plan. And I like to plan, I like to schedule my volunteers two months in advance and plan set lists one month in advance. That's kind of like my goal. That's my, hopefully what I have. And so I've already, at the beginning of January, I went through and scheduled through February. And I will say, I always like to go the first week in the next month. So you can see here on the screen, I actually scheduled through March, but I haven't sent out these requests because I kind of got behind. So that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna send out these requests, but I'm also going to schedule the rest of March and the first week of April. So I'm going to load this plan. We added that one, this one. And let me go ahead and drag and drop so you can see how easy it is to get my volunteers in these positions. And we'll see if any block out dates pop up. Sometimes they don't, which is great. Now I know that I'm the worship leader, I'm playing every week. And then this is just my preference, but I like to start with my drummers because if for some reason I can't get a hold of a drummer, it kind of changes how the whole band may sound that week. I might not schedule a bass player if I don't have a drummer. And so I start with my drummers. And so here we go, let's drag in some drummers. I have three drummers right now, so I just drag and drop them in the order that they serve. And if there's a block out date, it'll pop up. There's not. Good. Next, I move to bass players. I also have three bass players. No block out dates so far. We're in luck. Now, this either means that they haven't used their block out dates or we just don't have anybody blocking anything out. Okay, we're going to put this guy, Graham. You've seen him on the channel several times. He's our only electric player other than me right now. And he does a great job. And I just send him invites to every week and we'll see what he accepts. He usually accepts them all. Guys, look at this. What you got? What you got, man? I got some requests. Oh, requests? Look at that. Accept all. Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, step number four. Now that we've got all the names in place, we've scheduled everybody, now we need to send out requests. Now the reason I mentioned this step is because before I send out the request, I need to make sure that all the call times are correct. And they should be correct, but sometimes I just wanna double check. And so I'll click on, let's just say my name real quick, and I look here on the side, and I make sure that I know I'm invited to both services. I know I wanna be at sound check, rehearsal, and the pre-service meeting. I don't need to be at the production setup. I don't need to be at mic check. There's all these things, I'm not a response counselor. You can see all these things that happen on the side. I just need to make sure that the right things are checked for each person before I send out my requests. If you don't put in the time to make sure planning center's correct, then your volunteers won't trust it, and then they probably will stop using it, and that's never good. And so I've been trying to work really hard to make sure that people can trust planning centers so that, they can, so that I can send them there with any questions. Like, hey, where am I supposed to be? Oh, it's in planning center. Hey, what time am I supposed to be here? Oh, look, I'll take a screenshot. This is where it is, and I can teach them to really trust planning center. Just make sure you do your part so they can do theirs. All right, we're actually gonna send this. We're gonna send the emails right now on video, you're gonna see this. Email these people. I don't wanna email everybody in the matrix mode, so I'm gonna make sure I know who I want to email in which weeks. I wanna email February 14th through March 7th. That may seem weird to you, but that's just what I wanna do. I click email these people. I only wanna click, I only want to um, send invites for the indoor band, not all 12 plans. I just wanna do February 14th through March 7th. Just those four weeks right there and nobody that's confirmed because no one's confirmed yet yeah here we go next you can see all their names there you could type in more names there if you needed to or if you wanted to if you missed somebody or you just wanted to add somebody to the list you've been placed on the schedule this is our template that we have saved here that works for me and i'm going to send it you guys ready let's send it 21 messages sent you can see all these little little things disappearing Boom, they're all sent out. Now I might have gotten an email. Oh, look at this, email. I have been requested to serve. View the plan. I'm just going to go to my schedule and accept all. Let's do it on the desktop. Accept all, will do. Oh, look at that. Oh, I already got people. I mean, I literally just sent that email and Cooper Short has already confirmed to play drums twice. And Jimmy Cooper has confirmed to be the worship leader. Man, 
that's great. All right, step number five, and now it's time to plan our set list and think through our call to worship moments. Now I've said this before in other videos, planning center is great for scheduling and getting songs in and being very detailed as the final plan. But before we're ready to finalize the plan, I need a place to dream. I need a place to be able to put down my songs, scratch down my ideas of what I wanna say in my call to worship moments, and that's the reason I created the digital worship planner. As you can see this month under my pastor your people tab. Um, I have a place where I can think through my call to worships. I have each week listed out. This past week I spoke on 1 Peter 3.18. This coming weekend I'm going to say something about Revelation 17.14. We're singing King of Kings. I'm going to talk about him being worthy. I jotted all this down. I kind of batched my work when I'm in that pastoral minded mode and I'm not dealing with a piece of gear. I get down all my thoughts. This planner gives you prompts to be able to do that. I also have a place over here where you can write down ideas of songs that you want to introduce to your church. If you go back to this tab each week, I put on here like a liturgy and service flow and you can put in your songs that you're thinking through that week before they're ready to go into the plan. All that to say, if you don't have a planner or a notebook, definitely get one. Obviously, I made this one specifically for worship leaders and I'm running a bundle deal right now. You can get this and the digital notebook for and save a couple bucks. I'll leave the link down in the description. You can definitely go check that out. Well guys, I hope today's video was helpful for you. I got a little bit more work to do, but like I said earlier, like and subscribe the video if you did, share, do all the YouTube things. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.